Hello friends, Endivex here. So what is the mastering and how it is different from conventional mastering or mixing? It appears that all the various online sources provide quite different information about this topic. Mixing provisions processing each instrument separately, plus a large amount of automation of volume and effects, etc. In general thinking, it is stem mastering is a simplified version of mixing, with the use of groups of instruments. This might possibly be the end of the discussion, and yet I imagine myself being the author of a particular track, and understanding that a simple group of tracks is not sufficient. When a track is sent to me for stem mastering, I inquire for kick, snare and claps, low pitched percussion, percussion loop, no highs, hi-hats, crashes and rides, sub bass, bass, middle bass, main synth lead or solo guitar, second main synth lead or second solo guitar, supporting synths and pads or rhythm guitars, main vocals with and without effects, background vocals with and without effects, Effects, leftovers. One can argue that such a number of tracks is always too much. However, only having that much sources handy will grant me the opportunity to work on every aspect of your mix. Please pay attention, that the price for the mastering also includes charges for mastering. No processing on groups of instruments with reverbs, delays, sidechain, etc. The only exception is using creative effects like filter automation on groups, proper labeling of all files. Please mention BPM of the track. Okay, so let's get rid of all the plugins on the master bus and save the MIDI parts of the project. Please pay attention that we can include the BPM data in our MIDI file, as well as save it as a multitrack. Now let us make sure the exported files don't exceed 0 dBs. I'll be exporting tracks through the master channel, so let's watch for possible peaks on it. As you can see, the peaks do not exceed minus 2 dB in the most dense part of the mix. We can delete the sidechain channel by now. Please pay attention that we actually have a compressor on the group of drums, which will take off as well. And also there is a filter which acts as a special effect in several spots. We need to retain this automation while exporting the multitracks. Let's export the kick for now. We recall the export menu, a WAV file, 24 bits is sufficient enough. Saving it into a single folder. There is this render queue function in Reaper, which allows collecting files that are meant to be exported and then rendering it down to hard drive without any more input from the producer. A very handy functionality. We'll add our kick to the render queue. Moving on, we need to save our snares and claps. Let's label these properly and add them to render queue. Low pitched percussion is the one to follow. We have four toms in this particular project, which will save in a separate group. Then comes the mid-frequency percussion, without hi-hats, tambourines, shakers and alike. All the percussion instruments that are focused in the mid-range. Let's label our group of instruments properly and add it to render queue. Please pay attention that I have used a drum loop in the project, which I will export as a separate track.
then we have the high frequency percussion that are hi hats, crashes, tambourines, shakers, cowbells, and the favorite of mine, the triangle. Let's solo the closed hi hat, open hi hat, first and second rights, crash, and the second crash. Let's solo all of the other heads and the white noise. As you can see, we have only the high frequency percussion playing back at the moment. Adding it to the render queue. We may now delete the folder with drums. Let us deal with bass now. In general, I inquire to provide me with bass in three forms of tracks. There are sub bass, bass and mid bass. But in this particular dubstep remix, there are only two bass tracks, which have no separation or whatsoever. It is only in the drops that we have another bass plane, which however doesn't overlap with the fundamental one, allowing us to export them all onto a single track. Soloing the track with the bass, bass group, adding to render queue, then we have a subgroup with synths. Synths should be divided to leads, which there may be several of and to saved on a separate track, and additional synths. There are additional synths that are meant to support the leads. Add in to render queue. Please pay attention that there are two lead synths in the project. In the second part that is not really a synth sound but is also a lead. <laughs> This should be separated. Lead synth 1 and lead synth 2. Now it is time for vocals. There are no background vocals in this track, only main vocals. Please pay attention that we should export both the processed and unprocessed versions of vocals. Let's solo the vocal group. Indicate that these are processed or wet vocals in the file name. Then we take the processing of the vocal track and export the dry version. We are done with the vocal and left to deal with special effects. All sort of uplifting noises, noise effects, explodings, hits. All these are special effects. Also in this track I have a special uplifting sound that I decided to export onto a separate track. I thought that I'd need to pay close attention to the sound during mixing. Adding it to render queue. Now let's check out the render queue and acknowledge all of the versions that are to be exported. Hitting render all will export these files onto hard drive. Now let us double check the tracks that we've exported. Please make sure that all tracks start from the beginning of the project. Let's hit playback and make sure that multi tracks are ok. As you can see, everything looks fine, which leads us to preparing an archive for the mixing engineer. Well then, it is time to archive the files. Let's make folders. Multitrack, MIDI, Preview, 
and reference tracks. Please mention the BPM of the track. And don't forget the reference tracks. They are quite important for the engineer to have an idea of what you're expecting for him to deliver. Then we compress it all in RAR or ZIP formats and upload it onto file sharing websites or your personal Google Drive account. The goals of STEM mastering are first, to provide a fresh perspective on your mix in terms of spectral content and relative volumes. I evaluate a mix as it is in general, using quality equipment and a well-prepared room. Typical flaws include haircutting asses in vocals, improper balance of kick and bass, a conflict between instruments or narrow stereo images of separate elements can hardly be remedied in conventional mastering as opposed to stem mastering or a fully-fledged mixing session. 2. Substitute instruments when appropriate. I happen to offer substituting instruments to my taste, especially kick and bass, that are essential in providing groove and breathe to your track. These services is included in the price for stem mastering. 3. Preserve author's idea. Stem mastering is called upon to preserve the author's idea, creative effects, from to back position and of instruments, their spot in the mix. In other words, my job is to get the most out of the author's idea. 4. Save money. Stem mastering is much more affordable than mixing. So, which stem mastering service to use? It is totally up to you. I recommend using experienced professionals that will make sure to deliver on time. Most importantly, go ahead and check out some of the works of the particular person that you are going to deal with. The price range for stem mastering is varies between 50 to 4000 euros per track. And it is only your own taste and ears to help you decide on the matter. I'm Andy Wex and until your mixes.